So here we are. My uh, pieces from yesterday are baked. What I did uh, is to actually was to actually uh, get some of the these are the funds. Uh, get some of the remnants and uh, just get them through the pasta machine and make a backing. And as you can see, uh, this is how it looks like. So whenever you wear your earrings, even if you somebody sees them from behind, they will not show just one color. Uh, also, the reason why I wanted to use a metallic is for the little bit of mica shift that uh, it shows here. For the second pair, for the second color combination, I went for a different cut because I thought, you know, let's not just make the same thing over and over. And um, I did go for the same thing for the earrings with um, a backing with the... Actually, they were not cane remnants, these ones. They are just plain the canes. But um, I did not go with that for this one because I want to, to do a specific kind of bail. So what I will be showing you is uh, how to put a, um, what I call a bezedging on this one because that's all it needs something here so you don't see these you know this sandwich of layers um and the same will go for these and i'm not going to show you the entire process because i don't want to make this video horribly long and then um how to put the backing with those specific kind of bales on this one and then of course um finishing them off putting them in findings and chains and all the other stuff so what i will be doing is just to you know cut strips and then set them and i'll show you how to uh, set them first and then how to trim them properly so let me cut a few strips always when you do this type of edging um go just a little bit thicker than the actual thickness of the the pendant or necklace you're trying to um, edge I'm going to do just half of it for now because there is quite a bit of uh, another thing do the sanding before you do this and I've heard a lot of uh, I mean I've heard I've got quite a few questions uh, about well if we do the if we put varnish on why do any kind of sanding and I'm going to tell you why not just because it looks prettier but what happens the more uh, unevenness you have in the surface you apply varnish on the more air bubbles you will get so the more even your surface the surface of the and again whenever you do this always make it flush with the back not with the front because the front's the one that you're doing the fine trimming on uh, so if your surface that you are putting varnish on is very nice and smooth you know close to perfection then you minimize tremendously the appearance of um, air bubbles and if you don't believe me do this take a, a little bit of clay you know and leave one piece smooth and another piece uh, get it through a texture plate or stamp or whatever bake it and then uh, try and put some varnish on and you will see how many bubbles you get on the on the one that is with the texture on it um, another good thing to get especially for the first rough sanding try and find and you can find them at your uh, local hardware stores usually try and find sanding sponges 
not sanding uh, sandpaper, sandpaper, but sanding sponges, because uh, those are much easier to hold in your hand. I'm going to put this aside. Those are much easier to hold in your hand, and also being soft because they are sponges, they kind of can adapt and curve by the uh, surface that you're sanding. And also, when you have a flat surface, you know, you just put it down on something, and then you have kind of like a block. So that is way flatter than your hand. Okay, let me do these, and then as soon as I get to this one, I'll restart the taping. So, while those ones are uh, sitting for a little bit, remember that I always like uh, stuff to sit for a little bit for the TLS to get a little bit thicker, because then they don't slide around when I try to trim them. I have this that I made after a very old stamp I had purchased, I don't know, like 16 years ago that was really really poor quality because 16 years ago the stamps were not what they are today so I made the negative from it with bacon band the half down half up usually it works better and you can see that my left hand doesn't work as good as the right yeah, let's hope that this will be good enough for the length that I need Yeah, it should be okay. Make sure that I got the enough for the bales. Okay, that was not intended, sorry. And, and because these will go like this, I do need to do a diagonal cut at the end of each of them. And see, I didn't cut here very well. So I can get them to roll around the dowel and get stuck to the base without to the base layer without hello what you doing of course i have Seamus again who wants attention stop that and i'm not even sure if i don't need a, a thinner thing to make the bills on which i might yes let me grab some toothpicks Actually, no, I need some barbecue skewers. I'll be right back. So, yeah, barbecue skewers is better because uh, what I want to do is uh, to get leather cord through here. So, if I use uh, toothpicks, it would be a little bit of a hassle to get the leather cord through there. I don't know yet. Leather cord, cotton, jute cord, something. Oh, 
Okay, now this one is good to be baked. And see, make sure that you do, if you will make one like this, make sure that the bales are a little bit conforming to the round shape. This is very easy to obtain. I just use that humongous cookie cutter and then uh, one of the cookie cutter cutters in the cookie cutter in the cutter set. And then of course, now this make sure that it's stuck all over and that it is flush with the back all over and then just go ahead and trim it and always remember always when I do bezedging I follow the surface of the uh, pendant or necklace or whatever so if the surface is straight I go straight if the surface is curved I go I always follow the end of the surface and it's very easy you just keep the blade pretty much flush with the surface following the surface and that way you're not prone to any kind of mistakes See how it goes very quick and very fast uh, you always need a good blade for this thing so I would suggest to you if your blade starts getting dull I will actually post a link to one of Patricia Roberts Thompson's uh, videos where she shows you how you can sharpen your blades on the bottom of a coffee mug. And it works wonderful because before I was able to buy new blades, my old blades were in an totally disastrous state and they were barely cutting at all and uh, I went ahead and I used her advice and I got sharp blades so if you ever have issues with your blades stopping not cutting well anymore just go ahead and uh, follow the advice in that video okay I will uh, pause the recording here and come back once these are uh, baked and I will do the bezedging on the blue one off camera because this is exactly the way I'm doing here so I'll see you in a little bit all right so I have everything baked and now what I need to do is to actually make some holes so this is what I have. This one doesn't need holes, obviously, but I will need to make some holes in the um, um, earrings. Also, um, as a piece of advice, try and use uh, just a little bit the highest uh, grit you have on the sandpaper because there may be a little spots where you had the liquid uh, sculpey. Uh, that you didn't realize that you still had it there and that gives a, a bad uh, look whenever you apply the varnish I probably if I put any varnish on it I will do that after this but they probably don't need I think that I like them the way they are I don't think that any kind of uh, shininess will make them look prettier but uh, Anyway, so I will be using uh, the, this. You can get this for a little bit under $10 at any Lowe's or Hobby Lobby or, you know. Um, and so I will be making little holes here and a hole here. And for this pendant, I will use a pinch bale and just put it on one of those uh, steel wire um, uh, collars because I think that it doesn't need more than that and these also they will just go on uh, regular findings but let me first do the holes and I will be right back okay so I'm going to get the pinch bail I forgot to get my little tweezer ones Twither, tweezer Pliers. Okay. 
there we go so this one is this is how it's going to be you see it's quite pretty like this i don't think it needs any kind of other embellishment or anything now for the earrings i made some double coil a little rings that i'm going to use to attach to the earring findings because as i said it many many times before i do not trust even with the when well, this might not work um even with the uh, jewelry glue I still don't trust much the simple jump rings because they will still have the tendency to get undone. Now, once again, make sure that you pay attention to how this hangs. So, as you can see, this one has the face this way. So, I will have to put on the other one the face going that way. So, let me make sure that that's what I'm doing. Let me actually put this first on, on the bale just to avoid any kind of mistakes. It's better to do it this way. Oh, come on. Yeah, this is called laziness because I don't go get the tweezers, pliers. So, for this to be like this, it needs to go like this. You have to pay a lot of attention to that because you don't want your earrings to look weird facing the wrong way or both earrings facing the same way towards the right or towards the left because they are supposed to be symmetrical not identical unless that is the exact design for them to be symmetrical not identical so as you can see they face both the same way with the tendency to go like this and these are the fronts <coughs> now on these I will get my tweezer you know what I thought a little bit and I think I'm not going to use the jute I'm going to use the same kind of chain that I want to use for the earrings so the earrings I am going to first place uh, double coil jump rings here on both sides and I'll be right back after I place those okay so I placed my uh, little double coil rings and I am going to actually attach these with chains to the earring finding. I'm going to make sure that my pieces of chain are equal for both rings. And see, I have a little longer thing here that I am going to use as a uh, point of reference when cutting the chain because it's got the chain has uh, a few small rings and then a few larger rings 
So that's what I'm going to use as a reference point to make sure that the chains are equal on both earrings. So I need to cut the one that's right above the larger chain. So yeah, essentially you should use some chain that's a fairly small, thin, that is, for this. And I will attach the chains to the uh, double coil rings. I will be right back. So I did the earrings. I will get everything in a close-up once everything is done. So the earrings are going to be really pretty like that. Now I measured already my chain and the whole thing should be around uh, 18 inches. So what I'm doing, I'm looking for the big uh, link. I'm going to let the chain go through here and then attach it with my double coil. And I will do that for both sides, but as I said, I cannot finish the and put the lobster clasp right now because I am out of silver lobster clasps, and I don't think that uh, a toggle clasp is enough for this kind of uh, pendant. So it will be finished as soon as I get probably tomorrow or Wednesday again to Hobby Lobby as I really need to go this week too I know that see the thing is that uh, they have the uh, jewelry finding sales there is a sale every month but each month it's a different uh, brand that's on sale so I need to get to it when the brand that I'm looking for is on sale you know so I will be right back as soon as I put these on and there we go as you see, I just uh, got the chain through the bale here and then I attached it again against itself with a double coil ring. The earrings, the chain moves pretty much freely in the finding so it will be able to get its own uh, balance. And again, careful how you insert it so both earrings will face the same way. And the, the wasabi and turnip is on a plain um, steel wire choker and with a pinch bale and the same goes for the earrings. So I hope you enjoyed and uh, I'll see you next Sunday. Happy claim.